So, all right, guys, welcome back to the shop. We got a little project today on the old Bridgeport mill. When we were moving this thing into the new shop, had the forklift come in and the machine moved when we was moving it on the, on the uh, forklift. And I knocked the switch off of the motor here. So we're gonna fix that today and get the mill trammed in. Got a little project for the mill. So I've got the engine here off of my pontoon boat. We blew it up over the 4th of July weekend. And I've got gaskets, got bearings, got a new rod, uh, had a little scarring on the uh, pistons. One and three was burnt. This is number one cylinder. If you can tell, this rod got pretty hot. Uh, didn't run the engine hot. Uh, I'm thinking that the oil pump quit on it. But number one rod I have to be replaced. I'm going to go ahead and replace all three cylinders. I believe this will hold out the scarring in the, the, it's mostly just aluminum from these pistons on this, uh, on these sleeves. Uh, if they don't hone out, then I'll send these pistons back. We'll bore it, uh, 15, 20, 30, whatever we have to bore it and uh, get some new pistons, the correct size pistons and rebuild this engine, get it back on the pontoon boat. But for right now, I wanted to show you guys, bring you guys along uh, fixing this <coughs> bridge port and get it running. I hadn't run it in about a year. Let's get started. Some of y'all might remember whenever I put the, uh, uh, I forget what they call that thing. Uh, it's like a, uh, it's not a static converter. Huh. V, uh, VRO, I believe is what they call that thing. Anyway, basically what it does is it just uh, creates the, because I don't have three phase power here in my shop, it creates a ghost leg. And this is what I used to have as the stop and start. Uh, and I would just reverse it here on the switch, but that was really too much trouble. Um, so we'll be taking that off completely. So I wanted to show you guys how this switch work. Basically just has three big connections and then uh, you have your wires going into the motor and it just basically just swaps uh, a phase uh, from forward to reverse. It's pretty neat. I'm going to take these two flathead screws out and we're going to try to get this re-riveted and then put back together. So I'm not going to bore you guys with taking this apart. So I'll just bring you back whenever I get this apart and see if we can get a rivet gun in there. So I've got these wires disconnected from the switch. Uh, check out these old labels. They're aluminum and they have them stamped. Well, they just don't build things like they used to. Uh, and these wire nuts here. I mean, when I was untightening these screws, I thought, man, it's been probably 40 or 50 years since this thing has uh, been, since somebody's loosened or tightened these screws. But check this out. This is all cast iron. Look how thick this casting is. Uh, and these are an old style rivet. Uh, I guess they pinged them like they do on the old aluminum boats, but uh, wasn't a pot rivet, just a, uh, but I'm kind of impressed how things, and these old labels, the aluminum labels um, for these wires. I thought that was worth showing. I'm gonna bring, bring y'all over here to the, uh, to the shop table and we'll put this in the uh, vise and get these knocked out of here and see if we can't get some new rivets or something in there.
aluminum rivets. Those things are pretty tough. We'll find some new rivets to fit this and we'll meet you back over at the mill. All right, got three rivets we're gonna try. Those are aluminum pot rivets. Got a little slack in the hole. I don't know if they're gonna hold or not. We're about to find out. I usually like to have a little tighter fit than that, but that's the largest rivet that I have. Yeah, it feels like it's gonna hold. I'm gonna go ahead and start these other rivets before I clamp them all the way down. Yeah, it's gonna hold, I believe. So that way it's lined up. So it's already got it held good. The reason why I've done that is if I just clamp one, then I would loosen that rivet getting these lined up. Um, let's go ahead and pop these. That feels like it's stuck pretty good. I'm gonna now attempt to put this back together. These wires are labeled, but they're actually cut to length. You couldn't hook them up wrong. Uh, so this wire, well, I guess you could go to there, but they're cut in lengths. You couldn't really, can't really screw that up. Make sure those are good and tight. That's the, that's the German torque spec. Good and tight. appreciate that as much as I did. I think that's actually German for hello. Good and tight. Good good and tight. I don't know. Maybe somebody watching this speaks German. Maybe if somebody watching this speaks German, tell me what that really means. Tell us what that means. All right, that's gonna work out. All right, I hope y'all can. Uh, I hope y'all can still hear me. I had to turn the fan on. It's getting hot out here this afternoon. I'm gonna attempt to put this motor back on top of this mill. 
this nail sits a little bit taller. It's got about a, I don't know, a four or six inch spacer here on the space in the head up to give you a little bit more height. Uh, that's what I wanted whenever I bought this mill because I wanted to be able to do some block work and I wanted to have that extra amount of travel. Uh, when you're doing small work, uh, you have to have the tail most of the way up, but you kind of get more use of uh, more use of your machine having that space. Uh, but because of that space, I kind of you know this sits higher. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna set this back up here. Uh, Y'all can watch me struggle with that. I don't have any kind of a lift that goes that have got an engine lift. I wish I had some kind of overhead crane in the shop. That would be nice. But for now, just got to use the old, uh, uh, So, uh, 
got that noise figured out. It's been a little while since I've run this machine. Uh, you know, I moved shops. Uh, some of y'all seen some of the old videos in the old shop. Uh, we built this uh, metal building. It's a uh, 26 by 46, I believe. And um, we moved here to the lake house and met sold our house in town. I'm fishing to, uh, like I said, I hadn't run this machine since I've, I've moved it here uh, because I tore up that switch. I went ahead and, and run the wire and conduit this winter and uh, just hadn't, I've used the plug for the welder. So that's what I've done to kind of save a little wire uh, because wire and building materials are so expensive. I just took and run my wire for my mill. So I didn't need but just a small wire for my mill, but I needed 220 volts. And so I decided to run a bigger wire for my welder instead of running two lines of conduit, two lines of wire. I'm not a, a, a conduit bender. Uh, I know plenty about electrical. Uh, I'm not a, a real electrician, but I can do this kind of work right here um, and figure wire size, you know, uh, run everything and, and it be proper. The, I don't have to hire anybody to have that done. Um, did go ahead and run a, a 110, that way I can run my readouts and my power feed for the mill. And uh, my light. <laughs> Y'all like my, uh, I bought, I found these lights. I always go to the thrift store. We have a thrift store here. Uh, we're just you normally know, in the next city. And I always go buy these cheap lights that the clamp's broken or whatever. And I just built my own mount machine, this bracket here out of aluminum and drilled and tapped those holes. and make me a little floodlight for my mill here uh, that way I can see I have to have good lighting but I had not trimmed this mill in since I moved it here crank it up by hand like I said the because of that spacer Really bring that table up, lock that wheel there, bring it up to where it barely touches. Yeah, we're out pretty good. We'll go low five, negative five. And we're about negative seven there. We're getting really close. All right. Tell you what, it's feeling good this evening. Alright, so we're about 20 low. Let's see. About a half thousand out right there. Come on. I'm gonna try it right there. Boy, that is perfect. 